Chelsea against Southampton on Boxing Day. Without the suspended Kovacic and quite possibly the injured Aspilicueta, Frank Lampard will hope that the likes of Mason Mount, but the team as a whole, can carry their performance from the win over Tottenham over to this game. But the biggest question still is whether we stick to the 3-4-3 or go back to a 4-3-3 against the lesser opposition in Southampton. Hello there guys and welcome back to Blues Fans TV for my Boxing Day preview recorded on Christmas Day for the game between Chelsea and Southampton. Before getting any, before getting into any of the basically video stuff, I want to wish all of you guys a very Merry Christmas. Um, to all of you celebrating of course and to all that don't, just have a nice day off I guess because why not? You know, spread some love rather than all the hating that always goes on, especially on the internet. You know, let's just do that. I do hope that you appreciate um, us putting out a video even on Christmas Day. I do hope that you enjoy it. Um, but you know, I won't like give myself too much credit because here in Austria we just celebrate Christmas mostly on Christmas Eve, so hence why today is just like a chill day for the most part. So it's not like you have to feel particularly bad for me working, I guess, um, on Christmas Day. But yeah, let's just get into the preview. Of course, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to Blues Fans TV and also make sure you hit the notification bell button so you don't miss any of the future videos. But let's just get into it. Of course, as always, by starting it uh, by starting it off and speaking about our opposition, that of course is Southampton, the Saints. They currently sit in 17th on 18 points from the 18 games played so far, three points above the relegation zone. But the worst, uh, the third worst goal difference in the league of minus 16, scoring 21, which is actually pretty good, but conceding the joint most with 37, which of course isn't exactly great. Although their recent form has actually been much better and lifted them out of the relegation zone in which they were in for a little while, beating Aston Villa 2 1 on the weekend. Or was it 3 1? I'm not even sure. I put down 2 1, but in my mind, um, it says 3 1. So whichever it was, you'll see it on screen anyway. Um, okay, they lost the two games before that to West Ham and Newcastle, but wins over their actual relegation opponents, Watford and Norwich before that were very big for them and of course also a draw with Arsenal even though they were actually really unlucky not to win their game you know of course helped them as well I mean we did already play them this season which you know is the first time this season that that is you know happening even though we haven't played Arsenal yet we're playing Southampton for the second time round and we won that game 4-1 of course at St Mary's in a game that if I can remember it correctly we obviously deserve to win but for a change we were actually pretty clinical in that I don't think we had that many more chances than the four goals we scored but of course we still managed to concede a bit of a silly goal as as we do. But I do remember, especially in the first half, Southampton giving us a little bit of problems with their pressing and us not really being able to pass our way through it. But, um, you know, that's just what you're going to get from them. And also with them still having the Austrian manager, Ralf Hasnödel, in charge, they've not gone away from being a team that really tries to play football. They try to press their opponent. They try to, you know, just be a bit of a pain in the butt, I guess. But also they just like to have possession. You know, they're not one of these relegation fighting sides that just like sit, park the bus and try their best to get you know, a point against anyone, whoever they play against, really. For the most part, recently, they've been using a 4-4-2 formation that against the bigger teams at times was changed to a 5 at the back system. So we'll have to wait and see whether they do that against us. If I remember correctly and what I looked up, they didn't do it in the first time, in the first game against us. We'll have to wait and see what they do tomorrow. Without, without a doubt, the biggest danger man is Danny Ings. You know, five goals in his last five Premier League games, 11 goals across the season with one assist added to that as well. Same number of goals as Tammy Abraham. I'm pretty sure joint second still um, behind, of course, Jamie Vardy, who's you know run away with the top scoring uh, with the goal scoring charts at the moment. Um, I'm not sure whether someone has, is now on 12, but it was you know Tammy, um, Danny Ings, and a couple of others on 11. You know, joint second basically. So we definitely do need to be very off Danny Ings, especially with him being in this form. We shouldn't underestimate Southampton. Like we shouldn't underestimate them as a team. But of course, we are the clear favourites and should be expected to win in all honesty. But to be honest, that was really it about um, Southampton. And now coming to Frank Lampard's pre-match press conference, which actually, which actually took place yesterday, yesterday morning on Christmas Eve. But still, you know, a couple of interesting things that were asked and said. Now, initially, he was asked and spoke very firmly about and against the racism. First of all, and said that we should finally, you know, he would finally get a chance to speak to Rüdiger one-on-one -on -one straight after, you know, the press conference, basically, of course, the whole racism chance that I did mention in my live review um, that happened, you know, towards Rüdiger by Tottenham fans in this case. Which, of course, is absolutely disgusting. And while, of course, Lampard said that, you know, what you'd hope for him to say really in that situation. He also stated that probably along with the away game at Ajax, this Spurs match was our best performance of the season so far, stating that the 3 4 3 is certainly an option for us, but um, not just after this game, that it was an option before that as well already. But he did kind of hint that maybe it was or rather that it maybe is a little bit more of an option now because the group as a whole might feel a little bit more confident just playing a top team using that system, you know, that of course does make a big difference. He was then asked about Mason Mount and his comments after the game in which, you know, the player said that, um, you know, Frank Lampard just asked a really good reaction from them after the, you know, bad results recently, but especially the defeat to um, 
Bournemouth and also that the performance could be a bit of a turning point especially for the young players now knowing what they can achieve in a sense you know that's what Mason Mount said and Frank said that you know firstly he highlighted Mason Mount in particular but also Tammy Abram and Tomori you know with all of them very very good displays and stated that his that this is kind of proof that sometimes you have to stick and show faith in younger players unlike other times in the past when Chelsea had very promising 20, 21 year olds and didn't stick with them and now they're world-class players at other clubs possibly a little Diego Mourinho with the whole Salah, De Bruyne, Lukaku situations. I'm not sure. It, it very much so could be very much sounded like, of course, Mourinho has done his usual antics of just trying to deflect from a poor performance from his team and spoke about Rüdiger, you know, just making a meal out of the whole Son situation, which he did, fair enough, Rüdiger did, but that doesn't change the fact that it's a red card anyways. Um, so Lampard didn't seem all too pleased about the whole situation, but... I guess it is what it is. I mean, he did then go on to still speaking about the younger players and said that they will have games in which they struggle. That is to be more than expected for players that come straight from the Championship to the Premier League to a top team in the Premier League. They will have bad games, but they will learn from those and be better the next game. And then eventually they will have a performance like Mason Mount did at Tottenham. And then he kind of went back to the point. Sometimes you just have to stick to stick with them. And um, this was kind of proof that, you know, that is the right thing to do. The last thing. You know, off the press conference and that stream of it actually cut out at the very end of him saying that already, but, you know, I caught it off Twitter as well. Um, Lampard did say that Aspilicueta is dealing with a small, I think, hamstring problem that is still to be checked out before the game um, to see whether he can actually play against Southampton or not. Um, but, you know, that was really, I don't think anyone else was mentioned to be a doubt or to be injured. But, you know, we never know all of the things because Emerson, to my knowledge, you know, wasn't fit to play against Tottenham, so I don't know whether he's better now or whether there's still a problem and Lampard didn't mention it. I'm not 100% sure, but that was it from a press conference and now getting to Chelsea. And of course, talking about the lineup, there is one change that Frank Lampard will be forced to make because Mateo Kovacic is suspended after having picked up his fifth yellow card of the season against Tottenham on Sunday. Now, of course, that means he's suspended, like I say, plus quite possibly leaving Aspilicueta out just to let his hamstring heal up and properly give him, you know, a kind of deserved rest as well. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea. Now, I said this in my live review on Sunday already, but even though the 3-4-3 worked really, really well against Tottenham, I simply wouldn't use it against a team like Southampton. I, ju I just wouldn't do it. To me, it's extremely counterproductive for a game that we really want to win. You know, going into the Tottenham game, I think Lampard and most of us fans would have been happy with the point. I don't think we should go into games that we really, really badly want to win, that we expect ourselves to win in a 3 4 3. I just did hampers our attacking play so, so much, as seen by our performance away in Lille, until we changed formation to a 4 3 3 or 4 2 3 1 in the second half of that game. Until then, we we're just awful. Like I say, just happen, uh, hampers our attacking play a lot. But it does so especially when our opponents sit back and defend. You know, when they play like Tottenham, who as much as we dominated everything and they barely had a shot on target, well, they had one, um, and that was in the 97th minute, it's still different. You know, a Southampton, a Bournemouth, a West Ham, those teams will play very differently. And Southampton, in my opinion, they will do that as well at times, even though they are a team that do like to have the ball and press and everything. They will sit back and defend at times. And I just do think, you know, that it, it wouldn't be helpful to use a 3-4-3 against them. I do think we should use it against Arsenal in a few days, but in this game, no, it's just not for me. As much as I'm sure that the players right now will be confident if lined up in the same system again, I just don't think personally it gives us the best chance of winning. You know, I know a lot of you will disagree in the comments. Fair enough if you do. Um, but that's just my opinion. I personally would go back to the 4 3 3 or 4 2 3 1, you know, kind of the mix of the two that we tend to use. And started from the back, of course, it should be and will be Kepa in goal. A centre back partnership, I would have Rudiger and Tomori. Even if Suma was class on Sunday, I want to see that partnership of Rüdiger and Tomori because I think we need to try out all the partnerships. We had Zuma and Tomori for a while. We had Zuma and Christensen. Not sure whether we had Christensen and Tomori together, actually. Um, but I just want to try them out to see what works best in a forward-the-back formation. And then at fullback, especially in a forward-the-back, most certainly not Alonso. Like, I don't like Alonso as it is. He was pretty good against um, Tottenham. He was good against Tottenham, you know. Let me not be, you know, harsh on him. He was good against Tottenham. But in a forward-to-back formation, he's even worse than I already think he is as a wing-back just because he's so slow. Um, but Emerson, you know, in my opinion, has to be on the left, you know, if it's a forward-to-back formation. If he's fit, he just he just has to play. And then on the other side, just to let Aspie, like I said, heal up properly and hopefully be fully fit against Arsenal, Reese James has to be at right-back. And, you know, I would be very happy with that back four. Coming to the midfield, and kind of it really does pick itself with Kovacic suspended, unless Lampard, for some baffling reason, decides to pick Barkley. But... You know, if not, and I hope he doesn't, there's no other options than Jorginho, Kante and Mason Mount, really. Who, by the way, I really hope can kick on from that performance against Spurs, because especially in the first half, he was just absolutely outstanding and he really showed what he is about. I know he struggled for a few games um, recently, but like Lampard said, you know, these young players will have the moments. It doesn't mean they're awful players. It just means it's not always that easy as some people imagine playing in the Premier League. It doesn't matter whether they're bottom half team, a relegation zone team, 
or whether they're a top six team. It's not that easy, you know? Otherwise, every little mug would be doing it, wouldn't they now? So I guess the midfield three just has to be that. There's no real other options. And then coming to the front three, of course, Tammy Abraham has to start as the striker. Like, I mean, that's more than obvious and clear, I guess. But the wingers are maybe a slight debate to be had. I mean, seeing as I already mentioned Mason Mount as, you know, part of the midfield three, I guess there's only three valid options for the wingers in William Pulisic and hudson Odoi. Don't want to see Pedro, I just don't. And for me personally, Pulisic just has to come back in alongside Kovacic, I guess, our best player, you know, for a few weeks recently. So, you know, I was surprised as it was that he was dropped against Tottenham, but in the formation, it made sense. But as me personally, I would go back to a 4-3-3. I think also Christian Pulisic has to come back in. And also William. I mean, he has to start on the other side, in my opinion, even though he could probably do with a little rest before Arsenal. He will be on such a buzz after his display against Spurs. You just need to keep playing him in the hope that he can carry that over. Even if he rarely does carry performances like that, even though has he ever played as well as he did against Spurs for Chelsea? Who knows? But um, he very rarely carries very good performances over, but you have to give him that chance, in my opinion. And personally, hudson Doyle gets his first start in ages, you know, against Brighton on New Year's Day. I think that is a good time to play him. I wouldn't be against Southampton just because I think we need the points and everything so badly now to get on a little bit of a run um, that it, you know, we need to play our best team. And at the moment, I don't think Hudson Doyle starting is our best team. More than anything else, though, I just hope that we can just show, show the same determination, the intensity, um, and the motivation tomorrow as we did on Sunday. I mean, if we do, I guarantee that we will win. As long as we just take our chances, of course. But the question just is, will we have that same intensity, motivation, determination against a relegation battling team like Southampton at home rather than Tottenham away when we were in a little bit of, you know, when we were under pressure, you know, Chelsea, the team, the manager, we were all under pressure to get a result at Spurs because not that many people thought we would. I personally didn't think we would get a result against Spurs and we did. So whether they will show that same determination and motivation again, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But overall, it's just the same as ever really. Work hard, press well, move a lot, quick passing. I don't make stupid mistakes, but while, like I said, you know, taking your chances. Personally, my score prediction, I can see a decent 3-1 win for the Blues in this. Ings will probably score somehow, but generally I think we'll be able to carry our form from the Spurs, Spurs game over to this. But to be honest, that was really it for me. Um, maybe it was slightly less detailed than usually, um, although I'm not sure whether it's actually shorter than usual. Uh, I did actually plan to wear a Christmas hat, like a Santa hat in this video. I thought I had one, but it turns out I don't. I guess I put on a red hat, <laughs> you know, hat instead anyway. Um, it's a Ferrari hat, not to do with Santa, but it's the only uh, red head I have. Um, but yeah, I guess that is that. Just imagine it's a Santa hat, please. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, that's really been it for me. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. I do hope that you're having a lovely Christmas day. I do hope that um, we can pick up a lovely three Christmas points tomorrow on Boxing Day against Southampton. That would be great. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to drop a like. That'd be massively appreciated, especially if you made it this far. Be sure to subscribe to Blues Fans TV. Make sure you smash the notification bell button so you don't miss any future videos. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up the chills. Merry Christmas. And I'll see you when I see you.